Hello crafty friends and welcome to today's ink pad video. Today I've got a few different techniques for you. They don't all come under one umbrella heading so they're a bit miscellaneous. If you want to see all the other techniques that we've looked at so far then check out the playlist. I'll leave it in a link down below in the description. The first technique we're going to do today is water colouring with our ink pads. So you can use any water reactive ink for this. So I've got some watercolour postcards here, which are the perfect size for card making. You can use mixed media paper, but you want to use a paper that is designed to handle water, really. Speaking of water, I've got some clean water here and I've got four distress oxides, bundled sage, pine needles, spiced marmalade and warm lipstick. Worn lipstick, not warm lipstick. What we're going to do is add some water to our watercolour panel. I don't want it absolutely soaking, I just want a sheen of water and this will allow my inks to move when I stamp them. So I'm going to do the flower in one lipstick, wipe it off of the leaves. It doesn't matter if some goes on the leaves but I'd like them to be mostly green when we get there and stamp that into the water. And now I get a lovely diffuse shape. This is going to be our background to our stamped flower. We're going to use a finger dauber to add a little bit of orange into the middle of my flowers. Stamp that. Might add a bit more worn lipstick. You have to work fairly quickly at this stage because you don't want this water to dry so there we go a nice background clean that off and then add some bundled sage and a little bit of pine needles and if it's not diffuse enough for you you can always spritz a little bit of water on and that will help the colors to move now you can take that off tilt it around a bit to help the colors flow Leave it to dry naturally or give it a blast with a hairdryer or heat tool. I'm going to pick up some of the excess water from around the edge with a bit of dry paper towel. I might even blot some of the darker areas and now I'm going to dry it. If when you dry it you find your paper has warped or curled, you can give it a blast from the back. That should help it flatten out. You could just sort of manhandle it a bit to get it to flatten out or you could just stick it under a book for a bit a heavy book or a heavy object i'm going to pop a little bit of washi tape on here just to help it stay flat in my stamp positioner that's fine now so what i'm going to do next is ink it up again but without water this time i'll add my ink a bit more accurately using my finger daubers give that a good press down and then we have a more defined stamped image on top of our soft background. Now for some bundled sage and a little bit of pine needles here and there. So now again, we've got a much more defined image. I've given my stamp a really good clean and dry. And now I'm going to stamp it up with embossing ink because I'm going to clear heat emboss on that. Of course, what I should have done and what I've forgotten to do is go over it with an anti-static powder tool before stamping with the sticky ink, but hey ho. So now we have some water resistant lines on there now. So when I do the next stage, those lines should be protected which means i can watercolor over this with some watered down ink and the lines should stay visible if you like you could watercolor over it without embossing and that will diffuse the lines stamped lines further you could always stamp on it in black 
maybe a stays on ink if you didn't want to do the heat embossing stage stays on is a waterproof ink so you could have black lines that are waterproof that won't move when you watercolor over it you could stamp on it in black ink and then clear heat emboss over that if you wanted to have slightly raised shiny black lines the world's your oyster really so I'm adding one layer at the moment of worn lipstick. Even though Distress Oxides are opaque, you can still see some of that orange showing through, some of the green. So you're already getting a layered effect. We'll leave that to dry. And now for some bundled sage. So all I'm doing is dipping my paintbrush in the water, adding water to the ink, and then painting it on as I would a watercolour. Now I don't think I need to add any pine needles because the pine needles is showing through nicely where the clear embossing is. So I think I'm quite happy with those leaves. I don't think we need to do any more work on the leaves. Now I will dry this with my hair dryer. You're probably better off leaving it to dry naturally. And just be careful if you do use a hair dryer heat tool not to remelt the embossing powder. We're gonna add a little bit of spice marmalade and some more worn lipstick onto my palette. Take a wet paintbrush, pick up some of the spiced marmalade and add that around the center. And this is a wet in wet technique where I'm going to kiss those two colours together and let them mix on the paper. Same on this one, but I'm conscious that this petal here is kind of from the back, so I don't need any orange there. Again, just working quite quickly letting the orange and the pink meet and kiss and blend together i do have a little series on watercolor techniques i will leave a link to that in the video description if you want to know more about the different techniques right i'm going to dry that again i'm going to take a tiny little bit of festive berries which is a red and add that wet on dry where i think there might be a few shadows so i'm just adding a bit of texture a bit of dimension flicking some color on here and there you can mix a little bit of the spice marmalade too and flick out from the middle add some texture and dimension. I think we need a little bit more definition around the edge of this here. I think you have to think a little bit with stamps like this because they're really designed for the lines to be darker than the empty spaces so you have to work a bit harder to get the depth when you're using say a lighter line but overall i'm happy with that i am just going to take a little bit of bundled sage and add a few splatters protecting the flowers like that i think that's enough and that is very easy to turn into a card you can cut it out stick it maybe mount it with a mat Add a sentiment and you're good to go. Okay, so another technique that you can do with ink pads is use them to colour other mediums such as texture paste. So I've got here some Ranger transparent texture paste in gloss. So this is, comes out of the tub white, but it will dry clear. So you can use your ink pads, as I've just done, to squish colour down and then add paste or clear gesso or white gesso or whatever you want to colour, whatever medium, to what you've squished down. 
or you can use the reinkers. give them a good shake especially if they're distress oxides because they need to get all that pigment and dye etc mixed up so you can add a few drops into your medium and then mix it up you can add it to white acrylic you could try adding it to glossy accents and then painting with it or putting it through a stencil as I'm going to do now. And the beauty of this is that you can then have your mediums coordinate beautifully with your blending and stamping because they're made from exactly the same colour. And it means you don't have to have 101 different colours of texture paste or mediums. It means you can have just a pot of clear or pot of white and then add your colours as you need them. So there we have some dimensional clouds that are in tumbled glass. This will take a little while to dry but I will make a card from it and take a photo for you. And this leads me nicely on to my next technique, which is stenciling with inks. I do have a whole video on stenciling. There are 25 techniques, most of which can be done with distress oxides or other inks. So check that out. That will be linked below too. And basically, it's just a form of blending with a mask. So I shall add some cracked pistachio through this Harlequin stencil. So there we have a very simple stenciled image. What I'm going to do now is shift my stencil over to cover up the stenciling that I've just done. I like that and add another layer of colour on top. This time I'm going to add evergreen bow and you can shift your stencils in all sorts of ways. This is just to demonstrate that stenciling is a technique. For more detail as I say do check out that other video 25 ways to use your stencils. Now we have a different pattern entirely so the beauty of distress oxides is that they are opaque so you can hardly see the cracked pistachio through the evergreen bow if i was to do this say with catherine polar inks which are dye inks then they're translucent so you'd be able to see through the top layer to the bottom layer underneath and you'd get a nice blend of color so when doing something like this Think about whether you want to have an opaque layer or a translucent layer and then choose a pigment slash hybrid ink or a dye ink. For my next technique I'm going to add a little bit of ink to the top of my papers going direct from the ink pad onto the paper. This is mixed media paper which should stop the ink soaking in too quickly so I've got some greens and a blue I'm going to lean that on there hopefully you can see that and then spritz the colors and these will run down my card and I can leave it like that to let them run some more or I could light them flat and let them dry or dry it with my hair dryer so you can do a spritz and run or spritz and drip technique which is uh, quite pretty for a background again if you've got the reinkers for this you can use those give them a good shake oops <laughs> just got it absolutely everywhere including on my top but never mind don't squeeze them while you're taking the lid off so put in a couple of drops at the top lean them up or hold them vertically and then spritz you might get a more concentrated look this way you can always go in and add a few more drops and you can tilt your papers around and about a bit so that is spritz and drip so my next technique is to 
dry emboss, I use an embossing folder, not heat embossing, onto my card, but also include some ink in that. So you can ink up a brayer or you can swipe your ink pad on. I prefer to use the brayer because it gives a more even result and you don't get so much ink in the gaps between the pattern. So this is the raised pattern. Pop a piece of cardstock in there, flap that over, once it's shut keep it still and then run it through my die cutting machine. So now you can see the pattern has been pressed into the card and the ink has transferred down into the dips. If you wanted to ink the background you would ink the other side of the embossing folder. And my last technique for today is to use inks on glossy photo paper. This will give you a glossy finish. So I'm going to take some warm lipstick, smush it onto my mat, spritz it with water, pick it up with my smusher and smush it on. Now, glossy photo paper, this is designed for ink jets. It's very absorbent because it's designed to absorb ink. So, you're going to get the liquid sucked right in really quickly. I'll give that a little blast with my hairdryer just to dry any of the bits that haven't dried. Now I'm going to take a clean microfiber cloth and just buff over that to get any residue off. Now we'll take some spice marmalade and smush that on. Again, I'll just buff over it to get off any residue from the ink pad. And if I roll or tilt this a bit, hopefully you can see that that has maintained its gloss. So if you wanted a glossy finish, you could use glossy photo paper. I think when you blend, it's a bit grabby and it's harder to get a smoother blend, but you could try using a gel plate blending out your colours on that and then lifting a print using the glossy photo paper. You can stamp on this as well, stencil on it. So uh, use your glossy photo paper for all and any of these techniques that I've showed you in this series to see what effects you get. But that's quite pretty, I think, with the gloss. So these are the pieces that we've created today are using this fairly random collection of techniques. If you want to stick around for a few more minutes, I'll make a card for you. Do come back tomorrow as well for the next video in the series. We're going to focus a whole video on dye inks, specifically the Catherine Pola inks. Right, I'm going to go and think about what card I can make with all these backgrounds. So I'm going to start with these two backgrounds for today's card. And I've got a stitch rectangle die here, which I'm going to position about there. Hold it down with a bit of washi and run it through my Gemini Mini. Then I'm going to take the same die and cut the rectangle from a card panel. Just get that straightened up, use a bit of washi to hold it in place. And this will need to go through my cuttle bag because it's too big for my Gemini Mini. So these dies are double stitched rectangles, which means they've got stitching on either side of the cut line. So I've got stitching on my panel and stitching on my green panel. So I'll add a little bit of glue to this and add this panel to the front of my card without any kind of border. Now I'll add some glue to the back of my green panel. And I like the detail that that stitching adds. And I'm going to use my glossy photo paper to make some flowers. So these are three from the same set and I can cut them out like that. So I've layered these flowers one on top of the other, just gluing them in the middle, rotating each layer a little so the flowers overlap. And I want to give my flower a bit of a stem, so I'm going to use this leafy branchy dye thing. So I'm thinking like that, but we don't need this top portion. You could do the stem in green, but I think it stands out well in white. So we'll add some glue to the back of that 
and then a bit of glue to the back of the flower and position them together like that. For my flower centre I'm going to use a pale gold nouveau drop right there and for my sentiment I'm going to use this dear friend that I've stamped in black ink and they have a fairly quick and easy clean and simple dear friend card. Right that's this video finished for today as I say do come back tomorrow for a bit of a deeper look into dye inks especially the Catherine Pula, but it's pretty much applicable to any water-based dye ink. Right, thanks for watching. I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.